Hey, I'm Dr. Sebastian Gonzalez from The Performance Place. Today we're going to highlight a piece of medical um, imaging called musculoskeletal ultrasound or MSK ultrasound. Now ultrasound is familiar, it sounds like a familiar word to a lot of people that have had it done, mainly for therapeutic reasons. And the reason when you go in, they have the jelly and they put it on you and they kind of rub and like you stay there for like five to ten minutes and you get it done the next day, that's called therapeutic ultrasound. Diagnostic or medical ultrasound is the same type of technology that uses a computer screen and you look inside and you see things like babies' faces and the sex of the baby and so on. So in this case we're looking at muscles, tendons, ligaments, and fascia. Those types of things can all be visualized very, very accurately and detailed on something like a musculoskeletal ultrasound. Now, I want to thank all the viewers already that have shared and liked our videos. We really appreciate it. It helps us get good information out there to the public that obviously you can't call and get a doctor to talk to you all the time. So we'll try to relay the stuff that we think is most important for our viewers and things they should be familiar with in regards to their health care. A very common symptom pattern of somebody with a high hamstring issue is going to be pain right at the butt, right underneath the bone they sit on called the ischial tuberosity. And I hear it all the time. It hurts when they drive, it hurts when they sit and work, and uh, that's, again, it's a very common finding. And this patient in particular, this is a marathon runner as well, this is somebody who had issues with the hamstring and tightness up there for a very long time, well over a year. Um, she also described it as she felt like it was going to just rip off sometimes when she was stretching. Now, if you're going to continue with this video, you must listen to this portion. You must pay attention, okay? Hope that got your attention because if you don't watch this part, you're not going to understand what the image is looking at. So just imagine that I'm sitting right here and you're going to look at my hamstring, but obviously it's down on the bottom. But just imagine you're standing over there and you're looking across this way and someone comes along you just cut me like this with a chainsaw right down my leg and slice the entire thing in half. The thing that you would be looking at would be as you cut it in half, you'll see the hamstring coming up and it'll attach right to a bone right here called the ischial tuberosity. Imagine the hamstring's coming, oh, I should do it in this angle. The hamstring's coming up and attaches to that sit bone right there. That's exactly the view we're going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we can see right away the ischial tuberosity, which looks pretty smooth. Um, Yvonne will uh, point it out. That's the bone margin. I could definitely see for sure a lot of inflammation. A lot of black there. Yeah, there's a lot of swelling of the uh, of proximal hamstring. You can see, see all the, the fluid yeah. around it. Now, let me look also because there actually is a little bit of evidence of some calcific change or possibly a small little avulsion. As we mentioned, that happens there that yeah. tendon attaches in so, so securely that when it jars around a lot, it could peel back a little piece. Now they mentioned avulsion and you might wonder what that is. An avulsion is actually, if you imagine, so let's just say we put our hands together with uh, crazy glue right in the middle. All right, leave it here for a couple days and decide that you're gonna come and just rip it off. All right, you might wonder that there might be some skin that comes off on one of the hands and it would probably irritate pretty bad, all right? So that's basically what this is, but imagine that one hand is a muscle or tendon, the other one's a bone. If you're gonna pull really hard due to constant tension on that muscle or even trauma, you're gonna rip off a section of this skin, or again, in that case, the bone, and it's gonna be floating there a little bit. That's an avulsion. Um, and I see some sign of that. Not yet, but right Right there, do you see a little mm -hmm. piece right yeah, there? Yeah, I'm just going to say that. There's definitely a considerable amount of swelling around that. It's supposed to be a thin little band attaching there. Mm -hmm. Now you might wonder what swelling is. Well, swelling is actually just accumulation of fluid uh, within a localized area, and it's actually one of the five characteristics of inflammation. I know inflammation is a very buzzword. So in this case, she overused the muscle and tendon and became irritated through inflammation, and now we see one of the five characteristics of inflammation in that area, chronic inflammation, known as swelling. So it's right as the muscle becomes tendon, becomes basically attaches the bone, and there was that small abulsion there. This is the little piece in question. It looks in this view that it's adhered to this. Mm -hmm. But the more I look at it, with all this swelling around here, my gut instinct is that this is a subtle little avulsion mm -hmm. versus the other things. And you might wonder, why not get an MRI on this? You can. There's certain things that go with an MRI actually that are much better than with this. If we're looking for a fracture, we're going to use an MRI. But if we know that there's just something going on with the soft tissues and we're going to rule that in and out, 
A musculoskeletal ultrasound is actually cheaper, it's faster, it's actually a little bit more accurate or very, very close to an MRI and also too, it's, it's a dynamic image. You can move the tissues around and see them in real time, which is a completely blows some of the patients away because they can see their muscles moving on the screen. MRI is good, however, it costs a little bit more. You're in the tube, it takes a little bit of time to get back, and also you don't usually compare bilateral, so you don't get to see both sides at the same time. Either way, these are the two types of imaging you should use if you're having an extended period of time down with running. You should look to see whether you really have something there or not, and these two images are actually really good sources to look at that. Now, if you want some more free information, we have links to our things we've posted throughout the video on the sides. You can click on those. You'll be shot to our email feed, which has articles, videos, audio, or actually uh, podcasts that we have here in the office with different types of medical providers. We try to really give the best to our audience and the best stuff that we know. We spend a lot for our education, so we really want to share that. Also, you can sub subscribe to our YouTube feeds, and it's going to be a little tiny emblem on the side. It's been there throughout the entire thing, or you can just find us on YouTube. But either way, please link up with us. I think we have good stuff to share, and hope you enjoyed.